Okay, yeah, now you can hear me. Sorry. It's been a little while since I did any of this stuff. So yeah, this is, uh, I showed this tweet. Hopefully you read that. Um, but uh, yeah, so this is my, some of my course material for uh, testing line or testing javascript.com. And I have this lesson on accessibility, A11Y. Uh, let me bump this up here a little bit. Let me, whoops. Uh, yeah, this can go away. Ah, try that all over again. We're gonna come down here to my live streaming settings here. Cool, hopefully that is bigger. Um, <clears throat> and anyway, we're gonna get our tests up and going and we'll do A11Y, our accessibility testing here. And uh, this is basically what, what you can do where you say, hey, Axe, I want to await an Axe on this container. That's gonna give me a bunch of results and I'll expect that that has no violations. But it's unfortunate that you have to do that because if you were to, for example, re-render and do a re-render with the accessible form, um, then you'd have to do this again um, to verify that whatever you re-rendered, like any change that uh, happened, like new prop, true, whatever, um, uh, that the change in the DOM doesn't result in violations. So I thought, you know what? I think that we should be able to um, have some automatic stuff going on here with mutation observers. So anytime that the DOM changes, we just run just X, um automatically. Now the problem is that just X is asynchronous. And so what I was thinking is um, that for each test, we ha set up a mutation observer that uh, queues up all of those DOM changes and, and just like um, takes the, the HTML of the document body and then, um, yes, puts that in a big set um, or something. And then it runs all those through um, uh, through just acts. And it wouldn't be able to give you like, this is the interaction that, that busted things, but it would be able to tell you that this test did something that, um, that was not accessible. I don't know. Just seemed like, like an, uh, something interesting to try out. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, so basically the way that this is gonna look is we'll have um, our, um, yeah, I, I guess it'll just be our HTML um, strings and that'll be a new set. <clears throat> and that way we can keep it unique. So if you have like a re-render that doesn't actually change the output, then uh, that's fine. Or like some sort of mutation of the DOM that doesn't change the um, actual DOM. I don't know if that's like a thing, if that could ever happen, but it's better than an array. Um, so we'll just use a set here. Um, and yeah, we'll say before each, um, and actually let's do this. Um, uh, test, I, I think actually just has a test context thing. Let's go learn about that really quick. Um, yeah, just context. Mm this dot no no i guess it maybe doesn't have anything like that yeah okay that's fine uh, i think that uh, other testing frameworks have it but yeah what we'll do instead is we'll say our context um here and this will have html strings well anyway we can do all that in here so we'll say context HTML strings is a new set and um, I think I think that'll be all that we need for right now but then we're gonna need a mutation observer so uh, let's figure out how to use that thing uh, I'm gonna use uh, take a look at some code that I'm familiar with because um, I find that to be easier so wait for element or for DOM change that works um, and we've got our mutation observer. Oh, great. We're using a helper for that. Yeah. Okay. So it's just a mutation observer. It looks like we've got a shim um, in here. And I don't think that this uh, utility is exported. Um, <laughs> here, let's just take a look at if the mutation observer is available. I'm going to put these side by side here. We go so console log 
mutation observer, save that, and not defined. But if I do window dot, will that be window dot? Undefined, okay, bummer. Um, okay, well, in a real library, if I were to like publish this, I'll have that installed as a dependency. Um, but we'll just, it is technically available in this project. Um, so we'll just do that. Ta-da, there it is. Okay, cool. So given that we have a mutation observer, we're gonna make a new one. Um, and it takes a callback, right? So a new mutation observer uh, with the callback. Okay, sweet. So we'll say, uh, and I guess, I'm guessing we need to do some cleanup too. So we've got our observer, uh, whoops. Observer, observe, and disconnect. So that's what we need. So context.observer equals new mutation observer with our callback. And, um, and then after each, we'll say context observer disconnect. Okay, cool. No memory leaks here. All right, so we've got our uh, mutation observer. This is gonna get some, um, some things. I don't think we even list those arguments. Yeah, we get uh, a mutation list, whatever that is. I can't remember. So we'll log that. Uh, mutation list, we'll save that. And there is no mutation apparently, which is not correct uh, because there absolutely is a mutation going on um, when we do this rendering hmm. in the first place. Huh, that's interesting. Uh, maybe we need to pass some options. Oh no, we need to observe. Whoops. Okay, so context observer, observe. And that is going to take what we're going to observe on and the options. So we're gonna observe on document.body and our options, uh, let's find out what our default options are. Those are our default options. So we'll just use those same defaults. Cool, all right, sweet, we got a mutation. Oh my goodness, I just dropped my phone on my keyboard. Um, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Um, somebody is leaving my house right now, I think. My wife has somebody over. They're doing freezer meals. Um, okay, cool. So I kind of actually expected two uh, logs here. Only got one. So that's interesting. Uh, but let's, here, let's do a skip on this one. Okay, cool. And we'll do a skip on this one. Yeah, okay, that's interesting. So, huh, there was no change when we rendered the accessible form. That doesn't really make any sense at all to me. Um, but we'll, we'll continue. Um, We'll continue with this first one, the one that works, and we'll figure out what's wrong with that one once we get this one working. Okay, cool. So we had a couple added nodes, um, and I actually don't really care about what changes took place. I just want to take the HTML inside the body. So that's what we're going to do in here. So we'll say context text HTML strings dot uh, shoot. What's a set add? I think. Um, and then this document.body inner HTML. And we don't care about the mutation list. Um, I guess we could use the bot, uh, the target mutation list dot target inner HTML. Muta Do I know how to spell mutations list? Oh, because it's multiple mutations. That makes sense. Um, is that a bracket because it's an array or is it a bracket because it's like an element type? We'll find out. Um, type of, whoa, cannot read properties. Of All right, forget that. Let's just go back to the document body approach here. Okay, cool. So then when we get down to here, 
our uh, if we console dot log context dot um what was it uh html strings should have an array oh it's a set right um um here array dot from it should show me my strings in there but okay good sweet oh hi frank thanks for tuning in um yeah okay so we have our html string sweet let's see what happens if i do a uh re-render do, 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 do. re-render and we'll just re-render a div hi boom now we should have two but we don't um it's interesting. I wonder if that mutation observer is like a self-destruct. We have to like reobserve. Undone. Undone. So that we get on mutation. Okay. Um. Hmm. Yeah, okay, let's go to look at the real docs. Mutation, oops, mutation observer. And dot observe. <clears throat> okay, I've got an idea. Let's do this. Um, because I, I don't understand docs. Okay, we're gonna go up to um, right here, we're going to add our own div. Hello, div. We'll put a nested div in here too, or span. Great. Okay, cool. So now there it is. Hello at the very top. We're going to say, um, observe. Nope, not const. Not when you're in the console, because then you can't reassign it later. So we're going to do var <coughs> observer equals new mutation observer. And uh, here's our callback. Um, take those args, boom, 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 args. Okay, observer dot observe on dollar zero, and our options. Um, well, we'll just leave no options because it looks like it's optional. Uh, well, what's that question mark all about then, huh? Um. Okay, so we're going to do attributes, true, character, data, true, and child list, true. We'll just send them all to true. Boom. All right, so now if I go 0.set attribute ID, hello, boom, my mutation observer happens, hello too, boom, again, again. Okay, so we are in fact getting mutations every single time until we disconnect. So therefore, um, this is not behaving the way that I would expect. Um, here, let's console.log. Is it because it's async? Um, very possibly, yeah, actually. And that would explain this phenomena that we're getting right here, where it's yeah, 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 you're right, Mike. It very well could be because it's asynchronous. Um, huh. That's tricky. Yeah, so what if we do, um, let's just pull in a wait thing here, wait come down here say wait wait for 500 or 500 milliseconds that is not oh right that's not doing what it, that's not a sleep thing uh, that takes a call back and it does whatever so here let's do that that time out uh, or wait mm. well anyway it looks like we got um, those two things so verified yes it is indeed asynchronous which does make this tricky um, because I because uh, basically what's going to happen is the test finishes and then um, react testing library actually will do a cleanup automatically for people uh, which is very nice uh, except 
my mutation observer never gets a chance to be called. I, I don't think the cleanup is actually going to be a problem. It's just that the mutation observer never gets a chance to be called, uh, probably because it's disconnected before. Um, um, yeah, so like test finishes, um, mutation observer has a bunch of callbacks queued to, to call for those mutations. Um, and then after each happens and it's disconnected before those are called. Yeah, so Mike is suggesting that we could do an expectation count. So you just wait for uh, those uh, assertions or, or yeah, just do an await at the end of your, your test or something. Uh, let's start with that and see if we can make it better. Um, so, hmm. Okay, let's let's step outside of this before each stuff. We'll make it simpler and then make it better later. So, we'll pull this out down here and pull let's just get rid of that pull this down or actually i kind of want that bring that back do, 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 do. bring both of those down here and we'll get rid of all this nonsense um get rid of the context dot stuff and just up here we'll just do that okay and so then we can await, wait. We'll bring that weight back in here. Uh, you know what? I think I think we can probably give myself a little bit more room. You can still see, right? Um, okay, so now in here, we're just, uh, we run this callback until it no longer throws an error. And so we can e expect um, our set, this HTML strings, um, dot size to be uh, two and then we'll console log this thing and then we'll do an observer disconnect at the end there hmm interesting we're going to get an error because it never is two received one huh that's fascinating oh okay that time it passed Fascinating. So this time it is only one, and it's the second one, it's not the first. So is it perhaps that this observation thing happens? Wait, wait. That'll just wait till the next tick of the event loop. Um, but I'm thinking that the, ob the observer does not get attached to the body in time for this render thing to happen. Um, I think we can, <coughs> I think we'll be okay by putting it into a before each because I'm pretty sure, well, actually, yeah, we just put this waiting stuff in the before each to make sure that it happens on the next tick at the event loop. So that'd be okay. Um, okay, cool. So then we've got these two. Um, man, I've got this giant bright light that's down here shining on my face. Super annoying, but it's my green screen is just a mess. I don't know if that ruins the bottom corner here. It looks like it's okay. Um, green screens are the worst, by the way. They're such a pain. Um, but, I mean, it makes things look a lot better. You can see more. Like, if it weren't for my green screen, then all of this. Like, you wouldn't be able to see any of this text right here. So, what do you do? Um, pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to get a real studio. That's what you do. Okay, so I think we've gotten this figured out now. Um, we just need to wait for the next tick of the event loop. In fact, I bet we could just do this, get rid of that and get rid of that, and we'd still be good. Um, oh, maybe not. Maybe it takes a little bit more than just the next tick of the event loop. Huh, I wonder if it'd be a oh, wait, wait. Oops, just do that twice. Nope. There's just something else going on here. Um, huh, interesting. Again, that happened. 
Why is that happening? Huh. It could be the implementation of this uh, mutation observer shim. I wonder how that is implemented. Oh, that's probably it. That's probably what's going on. So there, uh, it's doing polling every 30 milliseconds, and sometimes our test finishes faster. Um, so I bet that if we were to run this in the browser, it would actually work more consistently, but because it's doing polling, at least that's my guess. Let's find out what this um, period thing is all about. We got only two instances of that. Yep, they're doing sit timeout. Boo! Hmm. Yeah, so every 30 milliseconds they check. Um, start mutation checker. And I'm wondering if the start mutation checker is not being called um, in time for that first mutation. Let's see. Observe, we call observe, we give it a target and some configuration. It sets up its settings with some weird spaces. Um, remove already observed target element from the pool. Save. Yeah. Well, the, the problem is like we, we can do that. That's what we're doing right now. But every now and then it'll fail. So waiting for this expectation, uh, it works. <clears throat> but the I think that the reason that it's failing is because um, we haven't like actually started observing um, before this render happens somehow. I'm not sure why. Um, still trying to work that out. <clears throat> so this is when we call observe. Um, reconnect if not connected. Interesting. I wonder in what situation would this dot timeout be defined? So it looks like it's only defined when we start the mutation checker, but we're only starting it when this. OK, so I guess that makes sense. I guess maybe you can call observe uh, multiple times, and so it could already be observing. So in any case, we should only be um, working with uh, um, hmm. Yeah, we should all we should be calling this code. Know what that take records thing does? Only my listener context is not stack, but currently consists consistent with Firefox and other platforms. I'm guessing by context they mean the observer. The spec just says mutations. That's probably what they're saying. Okay, I see. Oh, okay. That this is making sense. So, um. Oh no. Okay. So this actually runs synchronously, as far as I can tell. Um, and when it says take records, I I see. Okay. This is what's going on. Observe. So, um, we set things up. This renders, and then we await acts, and then this re-renders. Sometimes this is taking 30 milliseconds, sometimes it's not. When it takes 30 milliseconds, then um, we end up with two. If it's shorter, then we end up with um, only one. So my idea here won't work with the, um, with the shim because it, it is pulling for 30 milliseconds. Um, but it will probably work with a native implementation. And I think the latest version of um, JS DOM supports mutation observer. Um, let's find out. Add support. This is a very old issue. JS DOM has many, many issues. Yeah, it's 2013. 
I gave it a thumb, thumbs up once. That's fun. Um, and it's closed, which I think means um, that it is supported since January 23rd. So if I, what version of JS DOM am I running? Pretty sure this isn't like an old, oh, I'm using Jest, right? Um, and the default, let's find out. Um, Jest environment, JS DOM. I'm pretty sure they're still using an old version of JS DOM because they, I don't know why, but they just don't want to um, let go of node six because it's not end of life. Uh, that's kind of frustrating, but anyway, we got JS DOM right there. So if we go to um, unpackage, let's look at what's inside of here. I could probably just look at my node modules, but we'll do this. Package JSON, JS DOM, and there it is, 11. Yeah, we're on a very old version. So um, npm JS DOM, find out what the latest version is there. 15, and then I think there is, um, let's see, jest, js dom, um, 15, or environment, 15, let's see if that exists, probably does, yep, there it is, sweet, so let's, um, npm i as a dev dependency, that thing, and then we'll go here, we'll set our test environment, do that, and we'll npm run ta or npm t get that going. And now we're running with a more modern version of JS DOM. Therefore, we probably get rid of that. Yep. And we might be able to get rid of that. Nope. I guess it still is async stuff going on. Uh, let's get rid of this so we have no await thing and see if we still, yeah, okay. So the await is still necessary. Dang it. I wonder how they implement it in their um, built-in. Because it all, it's all just a giant mock. Um, um, even the JS DOM implementation. So if JS DOM supports mutation observer, it could just be timeouts. And if it is, then we're in the same situation. Timeout. Timeout. Um, I would suggest this is non-trivial. Uh, huh. Q mutation record. Hmm. So Mike is saying a really, really hacky solution, or <coughs> yeah, solution might be to observe in before each and trigger a dummy mutation and await. Yeah, I'd actually considered that um, just to make sure that we wait for that. The, but the, the big challenge here is that um, my mutation observer needs to be called right here and right here. And um, and it's not because those are happening so quickly. So I need a mutation observer where the callback will be called uh, synchronously and it l or at least queued synchronously. And it looks like that's not happening. Yeah, see, because we're only getting we're only getting the second one because this one doesn't render to the DOM and call the mutation observer before this one does. But actually, um, let's see what the args. Let's see what that has to say. Run that. Yeah, it doesn't even get called at all. Because uh, it gets disconnected before it even gets a chance. Yeah, let's. Oh, okay, cannot log. Okay, well, that makes sense. Um, well, just expect that to be one. 
Oh, and disconnect. Okay. I forgot what I was doing. Oh yeah, I wanted to look at this. Application record. Hold on a sec. Um, dot length. How many arguments are there? Yeah, just two. That's what I thought. What's that? Um, why is that first argument? Oh, because it's mutation yeah, lists. So it's multiple mutations. That's right. Uh, so let's look at that first one. Is two mutation records. Look at the first of those. Uh, okay. Oh, whoops. My bad. Um, well, that's not very helpful. Um, there. Depth. Two colors. Sure, because why not? That is not helpful. What? Console dot there should I'm guessing that's a JS DOM thing. It's like overriding nodes console dot dir because that should like print out all the things and make it look nice. Okay, object dot keys. Let's just find out what keys are available on this thing. Uh and we're gonna log that. Um okay. Entries. Boo. Prototype nonsense. I d I don't know. What do I do with this? Okay. Um, do I still have my my khaki mutation observer up? All right. So we've got a mutation record. Mm -hmm. So my my biggest question was: Does this target change between? Um, Uh, yeah, okay, so basically here's the, mm, I'm, oh man, I'm super bummed by this. I just need some way to say, hey, as soon as the DOM is updated, I synchronously need to get the HTML of that DOM change and Okay, well, let's let's try it a little easier then. It's not going to be as awesome, but let's do render with um, axe, uh, UI, and options, and um, man, it's just not going to be that awesome. Um, we'll return, or here, let's get back our utils. Um, Utils equals render UI and options, and then we'll return utils um, except render or re render is going to uh, we'll take the args and we'll return utils dot re render args, which we're going to get um, new utils here. Return new utils, and then in here uh, we can queue up. Um, or we can add this stuff to our our set. There, let's move all this stuff in here. Um, to our HTML strings. So here we can say document or HTML strings dot add document dot body dot inner HTML. This is not what I want, but maybe we can um get something useful out of this. Um, see that new utils is going to have a re-render. Hold on a second. Let's figure out what this ah. For goodness sake, I despise how VS Code assumes that I want to go to the type definitions when I do F12. I, n I never want to go to the type definitions. I always want to go to the implementation. Always, 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 always. And if I do... Uh, command click. Yep, that's going to take me to types. I, we're going to search node modules. That's a fancy thing that I've got. And we've got nesting library, react, um, dist, your, there we go. Okay, so re render. Um, yeah, just calls render. 
it actually does not return anything. Good. That is exactly a good thing because I don't want to return anything. Sweet. Okay, very good. Um, all right, so then we've got this render with axe called render with axe. Um, we don't need the mutation observer. Uh, the real bummer to all of this is I was like, yeah, this might work. It won't be great, but it'll work. It will not work because if you interact with uh, something and there's a state update, then I, I won't be able to add those uh, updates. That's why the mutation observer was so important. Uh. That would have worked, um, except for that one really important case. Okay, um, what a total bummer. Okay, we got mutation list, mutations list, and our um, other thing. I don't remember what this other thing is. It's technically not spec, but um, yeah, it's the mutation observer itself. Uh, dot, I don't know, what's a mutation observer got on it? Observer dot. Disconnect and observe, that's all. Come on, it's got to have more than that. It's got to have like the target, uh, take records. Oh. Hold on. If I could do take records right here. Console log, observer, take records. Um, here, let's get rid of that log. Get rid of all this nonsense. That's not going to do what I want. And, uh, yeah, we'll save that. Why are we getting all these logs? Console log. Oh, it's this one. Boom. We got, we got some records. Okay. All right. Don't freak out, though. Um, here, let's do this twice in a row. Make sure that it removes the records. Yeah, boom. Okay, okay, this is good. We might actually be able to, to make this work. Um, sort of. No, we won't. Because then you'd have to say take records. Like, this is the user who has to say take records. And they'd have to do that in any interaction that they make. Uh, wonder if they're, yeah. Boo. Yeah, but it would work, sort of. If the if the user did it, we get records for both of those. But nope, that's not gonna do it. Now in some of these uh, some other frameworks, you ha every render and every re-render and every interaction is actually asynchronous. And so it might just like happen to work for other frameworks, for some other frameworks. But I don't want to do awaits all over the place. One of the reasons why I'm hoping the React team doesn't make us do that, because that would be a real bummer, especially since I just re-recorded all of testingjavascript.com. And it does not use async await everywhere. Um, not that it couldn't. I could record it all again, but I don't want to use it. I, I don't want to do async await everywhere. I like doing it synchronously. Um, <coughs> huh. Let's just see if anybody else has run into this. Mutation observer missing change, missing synchronous change. Is it fires too late? Sounds kind of similar. Here, actually, let's go back to here and see if we can reproduce the same thing. 
So we're going to do two changes. And I want it to log twice, but it's not going to. I don't think it's going to. We need to be on this one. There we go. We have two mutation records. And then we have four. Okay. Huh. Okay, let's try this. Um, remove, or yeah, remove. And it's gone, but we still got the mutation observ um, observations. This is running in a browser though, so maybe that is different. I mean, certainly it is absolutely different. So maybe what I, what I want is only available in a browser, and we could only do this in something like Cypress, which would be really unfortunate. Yeah, does Cypress have a before each? Oh yeah, of course it does. Um, so I'm kind of thinking this is a bug in JS DOM, and. Oh wait, you know what? Let's let's test something else out. Okay, so I just messed up something, but I can do the same thing. Okay, where's my observer? Observer disconnect. Okay, now let's do another observer observe on Yeah, sure, the React container. The React container? This isn't built with React. It is. Today I learned that uh, MDN is built with React components. What? That's pretty awesome. That's a, just one giant React component, I guess. For real? No. What? No, 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 no. That can't be. This thing, article content. React container. So it's like server rendered, but then React takes over, maybe? I don't know. That's interesting. Anyway, um, okay, so we're going to observe, observe this thing. And then um, oh, yeah, okay, my observer has a callback. Uh, and then what I wanted to do is make a change yeah okay so we're gonna make a change just one console log host set attribute we'll do a pre just a console.log pre set attribute do what order yeah okay so your mutation observer is not called synchronously even in the browser so that's not really a bug in JS DOM it is queued for later for a later call but the difference is that uh, the mutation in node is not um, acknowledged I guess by JSDOM or something or you know what try an array um, push length Mike just sent me correction. Oh, um, I guess maybe we missed your earlier or the thing that you're trying to correct. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm guessing you're talking about the, um, before each case or something, but we can't call done in our mutation observer callback because there are an unknown number of times where we want that mutation observer callback to be called. Um, so I don't think that's going to work. 
um, for us. But let's go ahead and try this. Yeah, to have length. There we go. Save that. Uh, let's get rid of this take records thing. We don't want that anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, come on, try that again. Okay. What is this? I have no idea whether it is just my code. This thing, document.body, can't read body of undefined. Presumably because by the time we get to this callback, we've cleaned up the DOM maybe? In the environment, I guess? I don't know, that's weird. Here, let's do this. Body equals document.body, oops document.body ah take that sorry mike i'm not sure what um i don't i didn't see a what if post from you what if what yeah i didn't see a what if I think I must have missed um, a post. I'm not seeing any here. Um, yeah, we're just missing this first one. Oh, hold it. Wait a second. Um... What if we do append child document? No, this isn't right. Yeah, we'll get a mutation record for that. And I know that because I know that if we add this, then sometimes it does pass. Yeah, so that is technically a mutation. It's just that gets mutated and then really fast um, it gets remutated and the mutation observer just misses it somehow. I don't know how, but it does. Um, uh, new mutation record. All right, we're gonna start getting kind of crazy here, but I'm really curious what's going on. So we're gonna pull up our dev tools. Um, yeah, okay, I'm pretty sure we can do this. Um, yeah, this should work. Node, inspect, break, um, node modules, just, or we can just do dot bin, just, um, watch all or yeah let's just do watch um run in band and uh a one one y okay pull this do that up here we go run through all this madness getting a bunch of logs okay cool so let's put a, yeah, let's just look for A11Y, source maps, and um, actually what I'm looking for specifically, um, oh, there it is. I want to find, okay, what kind of mutation rec um, are we making here?
Well, we're looking for node impl, character data impl, node impl. Okay. You, you to, uh, there we go. Want to stop there. Or actually, you know what? Let's just go to, um, yeah, mutation record impl. Mutation record impl. You mutation. Oops, no, no, no. I must be in the wrong spot. There's mutation observers. Mutation observer. Not jazz. Oh, there it is. Okay. So Q mutation record. Stop right here. Boom. Okay, and then we're going to do wait. wait we're going to just wait for this to have a length of one we make sure we wait for that first one okay cool sweet so we're queuing mutation record queuing a tree mutation record that is coming from this insert method um, which is the pre-insert which is the pre-append which is the set document type all the way up to this dom environment this is, I believe, in our uh, JS DOM environment thing module. Yeah, just environment JS DOM. Interesting. Oh, that makes sense. Wait, so, oh, right. We don't have any um, observers right now, but we still go into Q mutation registered observer list. Okay. Um, interested observers. We're gonna stop right there. Boom. Okay. Because like literally every single change in the DOM will hit this code. So we're gonna stop where we're actually um, making mutation records because there are interested observers. Okay, cool. So we'll play on. Boom. There we go. <coughs> okay. So there's our code. Boom. This is the code that gets us ultimately to this uh, mutation record. Uh, this is all synchronous. So we should be queuing up the mutation record synchronously. Um, huh. Your mutation observer micro task. There we go. Right there. Promise resolve, then notify mutation observers. Which is basically wait for um that's so interesting though. Notify mutation observers. Just we're we're queuing them all up, so we should have a um it should all be called tech. This is not the VS code with Chrome debugger extension. This is using nodes inspect break flag. And if you take testing javascript.com, I'll teach you how to do it. Or you check out my dev tips with Kent. That's uh, I show how to do that in one of those in the playlist. Um, so it doesn't matter that the, the mutation observer will be called later necessarily. At least that's, uh, the fact is that I, from what I'm observing, no pun intended, it's not being called for every change, even though it appears that it's being queued for every change. Huh. Um, console log here. Okay, got a ton right there. That's interesting.
So we make a unique mutation record for each of the interested observers. Okay. That's console log type and target. That's interesting. Why do we get so many of these? Uh, div oh right yes we do have wait a second no 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 I don't think we set up a mutation observer on the div uh, container node by default pretty sure we don't do that unless you do wait where's the target or wait where's yeah this is the div element um I'm not going to get inner HTML, am I? Got a bunch of getters. Node. Event? Whoa, whoa. So a node is a subclass of event? That is unexpected. Your HTML. Yeah, I figured it'd be just empty string. That's not helpful at all. I have no idea. Okay, well, my mutation observer is only concerned with the body. I'm guessing that. Um, hmm. Oh dear. Okay, well let's let's jump into this code. Mutation observers, where is this? Reveal and sidebar. We are yes down fifteen. For goodness sake. Copy link address? What is that? Oh, okay. So um where's my terminal? Code that thing. Does that work? Nope, that's too bad. Um, try this again, except this time, code that thing. That work? Sweet. Okay, so I'm looking for these side by side. Uh, you, right there, I guess. Um, all over the place. Okay. Um, so I'm looking for line 75 right here. And I'm going to console.log document.body.inner HTML. Uh, but we're going to do this if um, window dot th my thing. Okay. And we'll come over here. That window dot my thing true go down here and set it to false and then we have oh what i don't want the body i want the document body no inner html oh i think this thing is messing me up disable breakpoint try that again and let's get rid of this console log in here too A render, oh, that's fair, Mike. A render could be a bunch of DOM mutations, all that happens at once. Good point. 
Hmm. I hadn't really considered that. Um. That's interesting. So, I'd say that um, React is going through, it's updating, boom, 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 and it updates the input, but that input doesn't have an ID yet or something, and, and so there's a no label associated to that input. You get a violation, but then React immediately thereafter updates that as well. Um, uh, you know what? seems like a better better place for this might be in the react scheduler or something just say once everything's been flushed then we take a snapshot of the dom at that time we just do that every time um i'm not sure what the api for the scheduler is but uh, maybe we can dive into that next if this doesn't work um Ah, that's interesting. We never get our console log there. Console.log window my thing. Nada. That's fascinating. Um, very strange. Um, I wonder if this is somehow cached. What what if we do, um, let's just break something. Throw new error, blah. Yes, I believe that code has been cached. So therefore, um, yeah, let's just get out of this thing. I've got an alias, NRT runs the test. Okay, here we go. Windows not defined. Oh, well, that makes sense, I suppose. Um, let's just change that to global. And document probably won't be defined either. Um, Target.owner document, I think is what it's called. Target.owner document dot body. And we'll come down here and instead of window global save that Start that over yeah um i actually i noticed that as well mike and so i switched it to an array so that i wouldn't run into that um Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, this is just a path to sadness. So, um, you know what, actually, let me just try one more thing, one more thing on this. No cache. Yeah, okay, I have no idea why this isn't logging, but it doesn't matter because it's fool's errand. Um, okay, let's take a look at the scheduler. Um, probably end up on the GitHub scheduler. That's how you no scheduler. Is that how you spell it? Where's the React schedule? No. Scheduler, E-R. I don't know how to spell scheduler. Okay, cool. Yeah, of course they don't have any any documentation. Yeah, not yet finalized. Boo! Maybe it'll be released this week, actually. Um, if we're lucky. Scheduler. This is probably going to say the same thing. Yep. So, what is this, NPM? Oh, that's their flow type stuff. Um, index gonna be their source scheduler. See if we can find an export. Export. Okay. <coughs> now, 
That's interesting. Oh, okay. No, that makes sense. Um. Schedule callback. Um. I guess we could schedule a callback and just keep rescheduling our callback. It's worth a try. So let's um, get rid of that thing. Import um, scheduler from scheduler. Is that, is that right? Did I spell that right? Okay, let's just console like that thing really quick. And let's get rid of all this mutation observer madness. And all this. Okay, cool. Undefined. Nice. Star as. Boom. Okay. We're looking for unstable. Uh, what is it? Ske schedule callback. Sweet. That's a log document dot body. Enter HTML. Uh, okay. That did not work. Why am I getting this? Oh, no, wait. Uh, I'll show you in a wait right here. Okay, so the schedule callback thing didn't work. Um, but let's do a wait, wait. Um, and let's do callback equals jest function. We'll call the callback. And we'll expect callback to have been called. Nope, it's never called. Okay. So that was unuseful. Unuseful, does that make sense? Not useful, so I meant to say. Okay, we're going to go to our node module. Oh, whoa. Node modules. Scheduler. Um, source. Oh, this is built. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I'm guessing we're going into CJS, and I'm pretty sure we're going to go into development schedule um, callback. This calls a lot. Oh, I'm scheduling it wrong. Priority level and then callback. Oh, interesting. Priority level. Where are my options? Normal priority. Immediate priority. Okay, there we go. Um, user blocking. Oh, let's try immediate first. That boom, whoa, cool, okay, yeah, nice. All right, so then if let's get rid of this, get rid of that, and get rid of this, save that, and boom, we get it, okay, all right, not quite. I, I really want this to work for regardless of your framework, but oh my goodness, prettier just formatted all that. Oh well, um. But uh, if this is the best we can do, then other frameworks can figure out how they want to do it. Um, and it's just fun. So we've got our uh, this thing going. Let's go ahead and make our callback. Um, add um, body, or yeah, add HTML change. HTML strings. We'll do, a, we'll do an array to start out. And we'll say HTML strings dot push document dot body dot enter html and we'll schedule another doodad um and just pass this um let's we need some exit i don't know maybe we don't let's just see what happens 
and then we'll call this right there. And we'll call console log HTML strings. Yeah, kind of figured that, that would just go on forever. So we probably don't want to do that. Uh, this might actually, yeah, it, uh, it's busted. Okay, so that's lesson learned. Um, do let done equal true or false. We'll do this pretty hacky at first. If not done, then add HTML change. And then right here, we'll say done is true. Okay, try that now. Yeah, it looks like this is not happening happening asynchronously. This is actually happening synchronously. Interesting, sort of synchronously. I, oh, okay, I think I know what's going on. So this gets scheduled, the render happens, and it's like, oh, I've got some stuff in the queue, so let me call that, and it, it sticks it in the queue. Oh, I've got more stuff in the queue. Boom, 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 it just keeps on going. So I wonder if we change from immediate to user blocking, if that would make any difference. All right, try that again. Nope, no difference. That is gonna be killer. So try that, uh, that's not gonna work. So Okay. Huh. Do we get the callback scheduled? We can do it once. Um, we do a render. Yeah, I want to schedule a callback, but I want it. I want it scheduled. Let's see what this thing does. Options. I wonder if options delay and timeout. It's like all of my my options there. We've got a delay and a timeout option. I don't think either one of those is going to do. I mean, we could do a delay. Maybe. I don't think that's what I'm going to want to do. Insert delayed task. Insert scheduled task. Okay, so maybe if I set the delay to one, maybe that'll do something. So let's go back to immediate priority. Here my, here we go. And then we'll do delay of one and See if that does anything. Sweet. Okay, that did something. Um, but I'm pretty sure that all of this ran. Well, all of this ran synchronous. Well, hold on. No, that was asynchronous. Huh. Here, let's add a, a bunch of logs here. So, put one there. Here we'll label it pre render um, post render post act or async and post pre render. <clears throat> okay, yeah, so that's what's going on is we've got 
this being scheduled for a delay. It is being scheduled as a delayed task. That delay, even just of one, just being a delayed task means that we clear out all of the DOM before it gets a chance to uh, call the callback at all. Um, and so this is done, and so, yeah, no thing is getting added. Huh. Well, this probably should go in here anyway, I guess. Probably in here. Um, I want to schedule something at the end of our, you know, at the end of our time together. Um, so maybe just try all of these low priority. Let's get rid of that delay. And try that. Nope, that's going to go forever too. Yeah, even low priority, idle priority. I'm guessing those are in order. Yeah, boo. Um, uh, let's see. That calls equal zero. And calls plus plus is less than 10. There we go. Now we won't loop forever. Yeah, so um, and here we'll say if calls um, is greater than seven, whatever, and console log too much. So this is interesting. This is getting called post render. Getting called to um, uh, okay, here let's do called. Yeah, so this isn't getting called until after the render happens. So I just need it to say and I you know what actually that's Okay, so because we had an uh, a wait in there, that's why our idle priority worked. Um, but in fact, idle priority doesn't even get a chance. And if we do low priority, I bet that's the same in case. Yeah, it doesn't even get called before the end of the test. Normal priority. Nope. User blocking will probably, that probably means synchronous. Nope. Immediate is the only one. Oh, whoops. Oh, hold on. It's never called. Wait a second. Um. Huh. This it runs contrary to what I expected. Because I thought that we already ran into, like how did I get an infinite loop? If this callback was never called. Is it because of this thing? I guess, huh. I need to sit down, hold on.
Okay. It's probably surreal seeing like, whoa, where did that come from? Um. So the scheduler. Um, I don't, I don't know. It's confusing. Um, basically, it is a tool that React developed so that you can schedule micro tasks to happen, and then the scheduler makes sure that it executes those micro tasks tasks that you had scheduled. It, within the given time frame that JavaScript has to execute. So JavaScript is really fast, but sometimes it can be kind of slow or can do things that are a little slow. And if it, if it takes too long to run, then it prevents the browser from updating or showing updates. So as the user's typing, showing the key, uh, keys that they're typing, and that kind of thing. You've probably experienced this in really slow apps before. And so what the scheduler does is uh, React says, hey, React, uh, scheduler, I need this to happen. I need it to happen with this priority. Uh, like it's not that big of a deal. Um, and so if it takes too long to run this, then um, go ahead and just, uh, well, it can't really kick it, uh, kill it, but it will say, um, yeah, this one's taking too long. So I've got a whole list of things I need to do, but I'm going to wait to do those things. I'll relinquish control of the main thread to the browser. The browser can do its work. It'll call back into me later, and I'll continue with my queue of tasks. So that's basically what the scheduler does. It just frees up the main thread so that the browser can do some work. Um, that's the idea. And so what my thought was is because the scheduler is responsible for this rendering stuff that's going on, that maybe, uh, like, and that's responsible for all rendering going on in, in React. And so anytime there's a, a DOM update, the scheduler is going to uh, be involved. And so I thought if maybe I can schedule something in the scheduler um, that I can ensure that uh, when DOM updates happen, I can ver uh, add the, the document to my list of HTML strings and then uh, verify that the um, that HTML string passes X. But as I say that, um, I don't think that really will work because the scheduler doesn't actually itself know anything about React at all. And so there's no, there's no um, way for me to say, hey, scheduler, I want to know anytime React does something. Um, yeah, the, it's just like it's a queue of things. And so if I keep putting things into the queue, it's going to keep calling it. Um, and it's not going to care about whether React is putting things into the queue. So basically, when I ran into this, um, hanging situation, it was because I kept putting things into the queue forever and ever and ever. Um, and it's like, okay, you want another thing in the queue? That's fine. Uh, so I, I would need a legit hook into React for this to work, basically. So that's where that comes down, uh, what that comes down to. So my next thought is, um, I'm, it might be interesting to try this out in the browser and see if if it would work in Cypress um, rather than running this in Node. But I don't want to do that. Uh, and it's kind of late. I want to go hang out with my wife now. So I tried really hard, Nathan. I really did. Um, I really thought that it would work. The like going all the way back so let's back up going back to our mutation observer this thing totally should have worked um and it sort of did but it totally should have it should have worked oh got to disconnect sort of does We get, we get that every time, but not if um, we don't wait a second for the mutation observer to get queued up. And it, it should work. Um, there's just something going on in here um, in the implementation. Even though we technically are queuing up these callbacks uh, with every DOM change, like that's what it looks like in JS DOM. Um, it's not getting called somehow. Uh, here, 
mutation observer called. Here it is. No, thank you for asking tech because I probably would have kept going if I hadn't stopped to think about what I was doing there. Attempted to log. Oh, that's interesting. We attempted to log after the tests were done. Oh, wait. Yeah, probably because we're still listening on the document body. And after the test is done, we un uh, unmount the component. But I thought I disconnected. So my mutation observer should now be called because I disconnected. Um, okay, let's look at, um, come back here. Mutation record. Mutations list at length. Whoa, four mutations on that one. Interesting. And then one on this one. Okay, that that is interesting. Is it four every time? Hmm. Huh. Huh, okay. Here, let's do let done false if done return. And we'll come back down here, say done true. Um even though we should be disconnect. Oh, I know what's going on. Yeah, because this is failing, we're throwing, and therefore we don't disconnect. That's why that's happening. So here, let's do try, um, catch, and finally, we'll put the disconnect in there. There we go. Now we don't have to worry about this done stuff. Get all this in here. We'll throw error. Um, oh, yeah? Oh, yeah, that's right. Ha. All right, finally. Isn't that cool? Uh, okay, cool. Let me get rid of that. There we go. Now we won't have that problem. We'll still get the error because we're not getting two in there. But it's interesting that the observer is called um, four times. Um, here, let's console log the document body inner HTML. An estimation formula for tasks in general? I don't. Yeah, I, um, I don't really. Okay, so what's going on here is our mutation observer is getting scheduled for this one, but not for this one. And I wonder, actually, if we do this, if it'll be called at all. Yeah, it's not even called at all. So the only reason that it's being uh, called for this one is because we have the wait going on there. So, um, so there's that. Okay, so there we go. We're getting it. Um, um, okay, so let's take a look at this mutation list because maybe, just maybe, um, that mutation list has, let's say, mutation list array dot from, I don't know if it's an array or not, so we'll say for each mutation console dot log mutation, mutation record, and it has added nodes. Uh, dot length. Okay, so this first one has the those first two have added nodes. Uh, 
I guess you know what, Mike. The the thing that you mentioned earlier is still going to be a problem because React is just making um is just making things happen. Um, you know, it's making a bunch of DOM changes. Each one of those is going to be triggering this mutation observer potentially. What I think is going on is actually my mutation observer is being called with every mutation that's being made, including this first one. But that first one consists of two or maybe even three mutations. Um, in fact, what it's prob what's probably going on is we're adding two nodes. And then in this one, we remove the nodes when we do this re-render and we're adding a new node. That's probably what's going on. I think that's what's happening. Um, so that's interesting because that means that the document body at this point in time is whatever it is after this re-render. Um, but we need the state of the DOM at, um, at each one of these mutations. And we technically, we should check each one of these mutations individually to make sure that it, we never mutated the DOM into a state that it fails acts. But if that's an interim state, then maybe, um, maybe that's okay. So this basically is going to be a really hard problem to solve. Um, maybe impossible. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, that's not going to do any good. Yeah, okay. But let's let's take a look. Um we got added nodes. Here, you know what? I'm gonna jump back into our browser um here, dev tools, because it'll be a little easier to follow what's going on. Now let's get rid of that thing. I don't need that or that or that or that or the, any of these things. Just this one. Okay, so I want a breakpoint right here. Enter. And there we are. We've got our mutation list, mutations list, zero. Uh, mutation record, add nodes. It's a proxy. Do a node list. That's our target, the body element which at this point in time is like we've we've basically we've run through this whole test already so at this point in time the document body if we look document.body.inner html is just the high but that mutation list um or that mutation record as the added nodes um Okay, uh, I, I don't know if this is going to be very practical. Added nodes, it's a node list. Or HTML. Oh, that's interesting. I think this is not what I thought it was. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Hold on a second. So the second element in the mutation list has the input placeholder of email, which is coming from this inaccessible form right here. But the first one is actually coming from the second. Oh, gee. Maybe this is in inverse order. Yeah, so this is and then three. It's a text or a div element. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And then we don't have a index for fascinating. Okay, so we have four mutations. The first mutation is this div, this uh, adding that div. The second mutation is adding this input. 
the third mutation is removing that input, and the fourth mutation is adding this div. No, I think the first mutation, the first mutation is adding the container. And at the time that I'm making, uh, that I'm executing this code here, that first mutation, uh, no, 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 added nodes. So at the time that I'm executing this, that container, yeah, see it's a React root container, that's where we're rendering uh, React to. That container now, at this point in time, contains our div that says hi. Um, but, and actually what's, what's adding that to the DOM is React testing library. So we're, we're adding that to the, the DOM, but I'm only able to access its contents um, at this point in time, um, and it, now its contents are different. <coughs> so, huh, that's interesting. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Tech, for reminding me I should go spend time with my family. Um, yes, exactly, Mike. Um, and not only that, but even like right here, there, there's nothing in the information that I have here. Well, hold on a second. There, there is, but it's not really practical. But here I could say parent element. No, um, added nodes at zero. No, we want the second mutation. That's going to give my form in, um element here, and that's going to be parent element. No, ah, that's interesting. That's my form element, parent node. Oh, because this is the input. So there, it looks like I have no way of seeing this form. Yeah, you know what? Um, the more I think about this, the more it doesn't make a lot of sense to do this in here. Like, what if you're testing a, a fancy input that um, is supposed to be accompanied by a label by some other component? So where it's being used, it's supposed to be accompanied by a component uh, that has the label, but you're just testing the input, then like you're going to be screwed over. So it probably makes more sense to just put this something like this into Cypress directly. Um, and that is my conclusion. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so my conclusion for this last hour and a half, for however long I've been doing this, yep, hour and a half, is that it is not practical for a unit or integration testing scenario with Jest in particular. Um, it certainly isn't possible without JS DOM, the latest version of JS DOM that has mutations, um, uh, the mutation observer baked in. Uh, and in fact, yeah, we can get rid of that now since we're on the last version of JS DOM. Um, but uh, yeah, so not practical for these kinds of tests, but probably should work. Um, yeah, it probably should work in Cypress because the mutations happen um, not synchronously. Um, and so we should be able to, to it, it should be way simpler. I am going to stop. Yes, I'm going to stop. Um, I wanted to keep going, but I'm not going to. I'm going to reset all the things. This is all, it was all for naught. I learned a lot. This is great. This is how we learn things. But some other time, I'm going to try this in Cypress. And one of these days, you'll go to cypress.io and you'll go to um, docs and you'll go to plugins and you'll find another plugin in here for um, auto axe that'll be cool 
course it's in here already. Um, but it probably doesn't do it automatically. Yeah, you have to run it manually. So it could be a contribution to this. We just import axe slash auto, like Cypress axe slash auto. That'd be cool. Um, yeah. And then you could just do checks, uh, uh, check uh, alley automatically. Hey, sweet. They're using all contributors. That's nice. Um, Mike, I think you're watching this at like a couple minutes behind um, things. So sorry about that. Cause I think that was relevant a little while ago. But anyway, I'm going to start that. Um, yeah, so that seems like a pretty sweet place to, um, to maybe have some sort of automatic thing going on with a mutation observer. And I think that it's possible with Cypress it would, and naturally it would be possible with Puppeteer, um, and Test Cafe and whatever else too. But, um, yeah, that's it for me. Um, so hopefully that was interesting at least. And uh, maybe I will get to the uh, trying this with um, with Cypress sometime. I hope you have a nice night, and I will see you all later. Goodbye.